it's Fredia here. I feel like I haven't done a favorites or a monthly favorite in a very long time. I'm so sorry. January, February for me is always one of the most busiest time because there are shows, conventions, buyers are coming into town, and yeah, it's just been so busy. I'm so sorry, but um, we're here today. So, let's do this. As for my cosmetic favorites, I would have to say it is my Urban Decay Naked Nooner Lip Gloss. Um, I know that it's my favorite because I can't leave the house without it, one. And then I notice that when I go into my bag to grab a lip, like if it's a chapstick or anything like that, then I'm looking for this. So I know that it's my favorite and I've been using it every single day. I love it so much. I love it because it's not, um, even though it's gloss, it's not sticky and it doesn't dry up my lips. It's still somewhat moisturizing and I just like it. I like how light it is. And the color that I have is Nooner, so it's very um, natural and everyday and it's just perfect. So. I really love this guy. I Seriously, I've been using it every single day. Like even when I put on a lipstick, I apply this on top and give it a little bit of an extra shine. My next favorite is the Anastasia uh, Dip Brow Pomade and I have the color Soft Brown. I have been using this for maybe two months now and as you can see, it barely... I mean, I feel like I haven't even <laughs> made a dent because I only need a little bit. Um, at first, uh, I didn't really understand how to use it and my eyebrows were just wacky dudes and I didn't know what I was doing wrong and then I realized that you only need a little bit and you just kind of build it from there and it does take a while to get used to it at first, I tried it a few couple times and I was like, no, I'd rather just use my pencil. But now that I'm, I feel like I'm better at it, uh, I appreciate it even more because it makes my eyebrows look a little bit more natural than what my pencil does. I've always had trouble with my eyebrows um, uh, and I'm always looking for an easy solution. Apparently there isn't an easy solution. If I had fuller brows, maybe it would be or maybe would, my life would be just so much easier, but I have really thin brows and I have to really go in and fill them in or else I it's not there. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just have a hard time keeping them even because this one doesn't have hair in the, at the ends and then this one's a little bit high. So anyways, it took me a while, but I feel like I'm finally mastering it. And so... I have the pomade and I also bought the Anastasia um, eyebrow brush that also has a spoolie at the end which I love because I don't know I just love it so much I love brushing my eyebrows so yeah this is I guess a size 12 um, I picked it up and finally finally I can say that I love this I like it a lot it just makes your eyebrows look so natural and easy and Again, you only need a little, so this is going to last me a very long time. So I'm going to try something new, and I'm going to tell you what my favorite app of the month was. And I am going to say that it definitely was Snapchat. Now the reason why I started was because my friend Jason said I should try it. Um, it's just another social media outlet, and I thought, no, it's just so much. I already have Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all of these things, and I never thought I would enjoy or understand Snapchat, I was always really hesitant about it. But now that I've made an account and I understand it a little bit more, um, I just find it so entertaining and I have been Snapchatting <laughs> every day since. Um, I don't know why. The reason why I like it is probably because it's so raw and in the moment. Um, because you know, when you have a blog post or Instagram, you can kind of edit how you want it to look and it's sort of perfect in your mind but um, Snapchat is more of like what you're doing throughout the day and so I I don't know I've just been having fun um, taking little videos or little snapchats of my dogs and me throughout the day every morning I go in there and I just see what everyone was doing the day before and I also like that it's just you know you see a little segment of that person's life and then it's gone um, it's not overload and I like that. 
So if you do have a Snapchat account and you are curious, come and follow me. It's Fridia, M-N-F-R-I-E-D-I-A, M and N. If you want to know who I'm following on Snapchat and who I find very entertaining, Casey Nistat, um, he, he has a YouTube channel. He's just really interesting and he posts a lot of videos and um, the way he makes his videos are very organic and natural and real in a way and I like that. Geo Snap is actually really entertaining because they're really good at um, just putting illustrations into the whole photo of it all and it kind of is a little storybook of that day. Ava Chen, she is now the head editor of Lucky Magazine and you can see what she does all day long and I love it because she's like out to work and then she comes back to see her baby then she's out again and she's going to fashion shows and what she's eating and for me that's entertaining. Oh yes of course and Jesse from Annalie and Jesse. He just started Snapchat so I've been following him as well. So these are just some of the people that I follow. Let me know who you guys follow. Maybe your account is badass and <laughs> entertaining. Let me know in the comments below because I am really looking for people to follow. I only have maybe seven, eight people. Um, so yeah, I want to no more. I want to see what other people are doing. And I still can't figure out how to do white ink or black ink. Like you go into the color thing and scroll down and you go left or right or up and something and it's supposed to make it black or white. And for me it doesn't work. It goes red to red. Maybe my Snapchat is broken. So I gotta tell you, this past month I've just been re-loving my iPhone. I don't know why but I've just feel like I've been re-exploring the benefits of having an iPhone. And one of the things that I enjoy the most, especially in my car, are listening to podcasts. So after Serial ended, I never really thought I would listen to another podcast until Serial came back. But I'm finding out that there are so many other great podcasts out there. And I feel like I am learning something while I'm driving or while I'm getting ready. Um, I really love listening to people's stories, so for me, I've just been addicted and I can't stop. One of my favorite ones is Whistling in the Dark, and they just had an interview with um, the two girls who started Who, What, Where, and that was pretty interesting for me. They also had the ex-head um, editor of Seventeen Magazine and, and Shock It, I think. Um, and it was just really inspiring too, just to hear her story and what she did. For Whistling in the Dark, it's Shannon Fitzgerald. She's an Emmy-nominated TV producer, former MTV executive. Um, she's just really good and quick and easy to listen to, and she has a lot of good questions. Um, it, they're not all female guests, but it does feel like it it gravitates more to that. For me, it's very inspiring to hear other people's stories and how everyone is different. There's no one rule on, you know, how things happen. And so listening to her podcast is really interesting. Since I've revamped my blog, I've kind of been going back onto like what I should post and what are interesting things and how to make your blog work for you and stuff like that. There's actually a few great podcasts for people who really want to take their blog to the next level or you're trying to do something on social media. Um, some of the ones that I really like are How They Blog by Kat Lee. She has really great guests and they tell you the ins and outs of like Pinterest or what goes into when they're creating their blog post or when they're interviewing someone for a podcast. Another easy listening one is Elise Gets Crafty and she's also a blogger but she just kind of gives you the things that maybe people are dealing with, whether it's financial or emotionally, you're just fearful of posting things, um, just how to deal with it. It's really interesting because all of these podcasts aren't just, you know, one thing. It's kind of the overall of like social media. And um, I'm also trying to put more stuff on my Etsy site, which is in the works. It's not up yet. Um, it's in the works. And so there are also a lot of Etsy podcasts on, you know, what they have to deal with or tax returns or, you know, little things here and there. And for me, that's really interesting. And 
It really helps when you're sitting in this LA traffic for an hour, you can listen to a whole podcast and actually learn something. Another cool, exciting thing that just happened was I launched a little line called Six to Eight. And right now, we just have pouches, and this is the fold over pouch. So it's sort of like a clutch, and we have three sizes a small one, the fold over, and a large one. And um, we just launched our website, and oh, gosh it took so much time trying to figure out what we wanted to post taking pictures making samples sending it out to Japan right now our main customers are in Japan and I think it's just because I've had those relationships with the buyers before so it's just a little bit easier for us to get in there um, but I am planning to hit up some boutiques in LA and hopefully get some stores in the United States within the end of the year fingers crossed um, and we are going to try to get our web shop up and running hopefully soon it might take us a while give us a month or so because we're still trying to figure out some knickknacks and um, we are still trying to figure out inventory as well but um, if you are in Japan then you might be able to find one at um, Jewel Changes which is a United Aero store and um, there's a few other stores. Yeah, I'll just post it down in the description box below. And feel free to go by and say hello to 6 to 8 and like their Facebook page. Um, these are just graphics that my friend Tomo and I created. And it really... It's, it's this brand that we never really expected to happen. But it kind of just did naturally. And I think that's why we're enjoying it so much. Because it's not so forced in any kind of way anyways so exciting because it's been in the works for the past six months but i didn't really know what was going to happen and we had buyers come in and they purchased stuff and we shipped it out the beginning of february so that was really exciting and this past february was my birthday um i just had so much fun hanging out with friends at the same time i got to uh travel a little bit we went over to madonna inn me and three other girlfriends i'm planning on getting the vlog up for that fairly soon um, it was just so much fun, so much fun. And then after that, um, I went on a little trip to San Diego and I took the train for the first time. That was an adventure. Um, so yeah, just kind of getting out of town and exploring different sides of California is just really interesting. You know, it's, I've been here for 10 years and you kind of forget that there are so many you know, hidden gems and hidden places to go check out, even in, within the city itself. Um, so I'm kind of going out on more adventures and finding more about it, I guess. Another really cool thing that happened this past month was I got to do a workshop with Space 1520 Urban Outfitters, and we did a heart friendship bracelet DIY class, and it was so much fun. I know it was really hard, for some people, there were some students that did have a struggle doing it, but at the end, it all worked out, and they made beautiful bracelets, and I even remember one of the girls, she has a blog, and she um, posted photos and how to do it. She did a whole little, like, instruction on how she got the hang of it and I thought that was so awesome and so amazing. At the end of the class I got so many questions and suggestions if I were to make a video on how to make this friendship bracelet and at first I thought yeah I could do it I, I'll, I'll totally do it and then it's been a few weeks and I haven't done it so I don't know if I will but I do have a small giveaway for you guys so for the class um, it was so last minute, but I made a little booklet with photos on how to make the bracelets. And I have three extra booklets left here with me, along with some printouts. I have this up on my blog, which you can print out for free, but I, print, I printed it out on um, cardstock. And I made it so that after you make your bracelet, you can just kind of... Um, wrap it around and put some washi tape over it and give it to your friend. So I have extras of these and I also have extra thread from the workshop. So I thought for three lucky people who really want to make a um, friendship heart friendship bracelet, 
I want to do a mini giveaway and give it to you guys and I'll just do it internationally wherever you are I will put everything in my blog so that it's just easier to figure out so if you are curious hop on over over there and um, good luck all right, hopefully this video wasn't too lengthy for you guys. I just got so excited. I haven't talked to you guys in a while, and I don't know. I just get really excited and have so much to talk about. See, I'm already blabbing away. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and um, yeah, let me know what you thought in the comments below, and I will see you guys real soon. Bye!